Okay, so in this video, I'm going to go through how you would apply simulations to parts. Now, why why would you do a simulation on a program compared to doing it in real life? So in industry, uh, a simulation or product testing is very expensive and very time consuming. So if we've got this part here, just the back of the remote, um, if we wanted to test this and test uh, so you can see that that bit flexing there it's quite a simple part but if we were to test that we would have to get I don't know 50 to 100 of them made maybe and then we'd have to obviously pay for someone to do that pay for the materials pay for the manufacturing of them prototyping um, they have to be in the right material otherwise they won't react the same way as if they would you know so if this was 3d printed it wouldn't react in the same way as it would if it was made out of this uh, ABS, I think it is. Um, so you'd have to pay for that, pay for the people to manufacture it, pay for the materials. Um, and you'd also have to pay for the testing. You'd have to pay for machines to test it, you know, get a machine to kind of press it in like a thousand times or something. Um, so that's very expensive. And you can imagine uh, part testing on things like buildings or cars or uh, even mobile phones or hinges or something. It can get very expensive, especially if you've got a high volume production. So if you were to make, I don't know, like uh, a couple of hundred thousand of these phone cases and you were to get that wrong, the testing over, you know, an extended period, you've then have to have a recall of all of them parts. So that's the reason we do it in CAD is to save time and money. So you can set off 50, tests and go make a cup of coffee or go to a meeting or something and come back and they're all ready and you can vary the tests as well and you can change things after you've made the tests within a couple of minutes or seconds even so what i've done is i've really poorly recreated this um hinge i think this is called a live hinge so it's one piece injection molded and then the very bottom part of here is quite thin and obviously when you put your thumbnail in you can press that back and then this will pop off so you can change the batteries so I've recreated that and now you can see I've got that here I've got this very thin piece there at the bottom so what we're going to do is we're going to test it and see how it reacts to a force of one kilogram pushing on it that way so the first thing we're going to do is um, save it if you haven't already because sometimes it crashes and then go to the workspace window here and then click on simulation. Now in Fusion 360 or other programs even, you can, there's lots of different types of simulations. So you've got static stress, which, which is the one that we're going to use. Um, modal frequencies, which is um, um, how things vibrate. So for an example they've given is uh, like a, a propeller of some kind. You can see that if something's off balance, it will, you know, flex, especially when it's moving at a couple of thousand times a second. Uh, you've got electronics and thermal, which is kind of self-explanatory. If you've got something that produces heat, you can test how your cooling system works in the computer. Um, thermal stress, um, buckling for things like uh, structures. So if you're an interior student or an architecture student, you can use that to test how the weight or, or the, you know force and something will cause the structure to buckle um, we'll ignore these for now I'm going to go into that in another video but for now we're just going to click on static stress right so now this window uh, workspace opens so we'll get into that in a second but basically you can set off different studies so the first one we've got is, is obviously study one and you can set different parts it's the same thing as the tools it's just in the menu so you've got different materials for the parts and then you've got the mesh <clears throat> oh no i don't want to do that you can turn on the mesh and then you can look at the results once you've finished so the first thing we're going to do is click on materials and set the material now because we've only got one part only one shown up here so we'll just search for what can i search for abs oh yeah abs right that's fine. Now it's important to s select the right kind of material because can I view them? Yeah, because different materials have different properties. Young's modulus is the engineering 
the definition of how strong a material is. You've got the density of the material. Uh, this is a ratio on how much it uh, compresses when it's stretched, uh, yield strength, you know, things like that, thermal conductivity. It's really important to get this material right because it will react in different ways. You can imagine if I was to make this out of rubber uh, in the simulation compared to steel, it would react differently. So make sure you get that right. And click OK. Now we need to set some constraints. So as mentioned in other videos, this part is in an infinitely big world in this digital design file. So, that's a lot. Um, so what we need to do is we need to tell it what parts can move and what parts can't. So if we just zoom in, and I'll select this bottom face. Now it only selects faces, but so what we've done is we've told the computer that this shall not move, it doesn't need to move because we're actually testing this. So this is effectively glued down to a table, if you can imagine that. Right, so that's selected now. You can see it's got a little padlock on it. And then now we need to apply the loads. Now, because this is a simple object, we're just going to apply one load. So now we can select uh, faces or edges. So we're just going to select this face here. Now, it, it is measured in newtons. So a newton is equivalent to about a kilogram. So we'll just type in one. And click OK. But now you can see that this is actually going in the wrong direction. We don't want to pull it, we want to push it. So if we double click on the force and then just type in minus one and then hit the tab button, that'll put it in the right direction. So now we've got a constraint and a force. Now for this model, that's all we need, but you can apply more than once if you wanted to apply like a force to that face. You know, you can apply one there, but we're just going to ignore that for now. Um, and it, from our complex parts, like you can see in the thumbnail here, we've got like uh, eye beams. You can uh, you can turn gravity on. So if you've got quite a big model and you've got structural things, you know, pressing down, gravity will affect that anyway before the forces are applied. So that might help in more complex models or larger models. And um, we'll leave that for now. Now that's fine. These are just different types of display you want to use, um, but we'll just We'll just ignore that. Uh, I've never needed to use it. So before we send it off, we need to pre-check it. That's fine. If there's any errors, this will come up with an amber or red sign, and then you can just scroll through what the errors are, and then you can fix them. More than likely, it's because you've not set a constraint or you've not applied the load properly or something. So if that's fine, we'll just click Solve, and then you can just solve one study, which is this one. Now, I've already solved it. Because it does take, it, it is rendered on the cloud, so it just it can take a while depending on how big and complex it is. So this is what we get. Zoom out. Now this doesn't make much sense when you first look at it, but the first thing you need to know. So if I just move that, um, click on the front. So if we look at it from the side view, sometimes. What will happen is it doesn't look like it's moved quite a lot, even though it has. So a good thing to do is go to the deformation menu and then click actual. So this is to scale and this is actually what it's going to look like. The only reason it would be adjusted by five times, for example, is if you've got a very small adjustment of maybe 0 0.01 millimeters change in deformation which you won't be able to see in the model so sometimes the software exaggerates that so you can see what's going on but because we're moving it quite a bit we're just changing it to actual now we can see here that the max deformation is 3.8 millimeters which is fine so if we look at the part again we can see that it's not moving very much and it's obviously not going over it or through it or anything which is fine that looks to be about right uh, if you change this, I think it is normally set to safety factor, but you can change it to displacement and you can see the stress on the part. So anything that's in red is uh, under the most stress and anything that's in this dark blue is under the least stress. So we can see that this is not under a lot of stress at the bottom, but it is flexing. And obviously where we're applying the force, there's a lot of stress, but this is quite a solid part at the top. So that's fine. That'll, that'll work absolutely fine. Now it is a kilogram, 
and that's quite a lot of force to apply with your fingers. It's like lift, holding a bag of sugar, sugar up with your finger. That's probably too much force. So what we can do is go back to the design, maybe copy the part and then make this bit half as thick and then apply half a kilogram and then see how that deforms. So you can see how by doing these tests, you can quickly make adjustments to the model and then in the long run, manufacturing wise, save a lot of time and money. Now you can also apply this to more complex structures. So I've made this one earlier on. So I'll show you the part. So this is called um, an oxetic structure. So when a force is applied, it deforms. And this is just one example, but there are the hundreds. And so what I was doing with this is I was testing to see how much a force of 150 kilograms on this structure would affect these parts in the middle and ultimately the bottom. But what I didn't want is for this to completely deform and buckle. I just wanted these circles to kind of twist as force is applied. So I was testing that uh, in the CAD software. So you can see here, I'll just move the camera again. Um, the parts in red are under a lot of stress, but I'm going to ignore them because this would actually be longer in real life. I was just looking to see what it would react like in the middle. But you can see there's not much, there's not a lot of force in one particular area, so it's actually spread out among along the whole of the part evenly. So you can see these colors are quite even all the way along, which is what I wanted. And you can see that they, are, that they have actually deformed in these structures here, have, um, you know, like buckled under the stress. So I can see that that worked. So that was, that saved me a lot of time because I didn't have to make loads of 3D prints to test it. <clears throat> I could test this and once I know it works, then I can 3D print it. So that's a, quick introduction to using stress analysis and infusion.